with my weekly budget. I have already kind of filled everything out in my budget planner. I've already gone to the bank to get the cash. So this video is going to be pretty short and sweet. We're dealing with a very, very simple budget this week. We have less um, income to work with this week than we have had in quite a while. Um, it was a pretty slow week at my husband's job. If you are not familiar, my husband works um, in the plumbing business and he gets paid based on commission. So um, his pay fluctuates week to week. Um, and this last week has been especially slow. Um, a lot of the jobs and things that he has had on his schedule for a while have gotten postponed or canceled because of the coronavirus pandemic. And so um, it's pretty uh, simple budget this week. We're not doing a ton of savings. We're not doing a ton of debt paying. Um, we haven't been doing those things anyway. But especially this week, it's just um, a pr bit of a simpler budget, which is totally fine. Sometimes um, it's cool to do that. So this is the budget we are looking at this week. I am in my Budget by Paycheck workbook from The Budget Mom. Um, it is a resource that really helps me stay on top of my budgeting. Um, I purchased the printable version back in December and I just print the pages that I need um, every month and I use an arc punch to punch them and put them in the back of this big size happy planner. Um, this is my planner of choice. Having my budget and my planner together works out really well for me. So that's what I have done. If you would like to see my April budget setup, um, I do have that video posted here on my channel. I can link it for you. I apologize that the lighting in this video is crazy. Um, I had some lighting issues this week. I'm currently waiting on some new softbox lighting to come in the mail so that I have better lighting in the future. Um, but right now I'm trying to use natural light and it's currently snowing outside, you guys. So, um, snowing and dreary. So it's not like the greatest situation ever. Um, today's April 17th, it's Friday, and we have snow here in Southeast Michigan, so there's that. Anyway, I'm gonna zoom you guys in. We're gonna go over the budget for April 14th, which is our second paycheck in the month of April. So let's zoom in. Hopefully that will help make this lighting look a little less crazy. Again, I apologize, you guys, it's terrible. So the amount that we are working with this week for income is $850. That is my husband's paycheck. That is money that we rolled over from last week. Because my husband gets paid based on commission and his pay is not consistent, we like to roll money over week to week. So um, that is what we're working with this week, $850. It's not a whole lot, but it's enough. Um, I had to do some drastic changing of my budget. Um, in case you guys can see these sort of erased markings here. I had a much more detailed budget planned, but we had to cut things down and that's totally fine. So we don't have a ton of bills to pay out this week, which is nice. Um, just kind of some basic things. So I'll go over those really quickly. Um, Boost is our phone, our mobile phone. Um, we pay $100 a month, that is for three lines with talk, text, unlimited, everything. Um, I love Boost Mobile. I think it's one of the most affordable options. Um, but there's no contract, it's sort of pay as you go. I highly recommend Boost Mobile, especially if you are trying to um, lower your phone bill. If you're just getting out of a contract or something, I will post um, a link for Boost Mobile down below. Um, State Farm, we have $35 that is due this week. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am so sorry about the lighting. Let me see if I can get, if I can adjust it a little bit because I know it looks terrible. Hold on. All right, you guys, I tried my best to adjust the lighting. I don't know, I think I made it worse. Um, I also zoomed you guys in a little tiny bit more. I apologize, the quality of this video is not fantastic. Um, next week's will definitely be better. 
Anyways, so I talked about our boost bill, I talked about State Farm, um, we have an Amazon bill that is due this week. I've budgeted $100 for that. Um, for groceries this week, we just picked up a few um, basic things that we needed. We didn't do a big shop this week, um, so I did not even film a grocery haul. It was just like half and half and a few other little odds and ends. Um, so I just budgeted $50 for that, kept it pretty slow or pretty small. I'm sorry you guys, I am stuttering all over the place today. I haven't filmed a video at all this week. It's been um, a little bit off my schedule, so I'm like awkward in front of the camera again. I'm out of practice. Um, okay, so we talked about groceries. For gas this week, I'm budgeting $50. I should just lower this. Um, I budgeted, I always budget $50. I didn't touch my gas budget at all last week, so when it comes time to fill our um, gas sinking fund, all of that money is going to go in there. Um, I should lower this, but I'm just so used to budgeting $50. Right now, we are still not going anywhere. We are um, self-quarantining. We couldn't really go anywhere anyway. Everything is pretty much closed here in Southeast Michigan, um, so we're just not using as much gas plus gas prices are super low right now um but for now it's fifty dollars for gas i might change that next week i don't know um any amount of money that we put aside for gas that we don't use we stick into a sinking fund for um later on down the line you know when gas prices inevitably go up we are driving again um, in the summertime, we tend to go through a lot of gas just because we go back and forth to our camper and we drive a big truck. So um, budgeting a little bit higher doesn't hurt anything. It just gives us more to save, I suppose. Um, for household, we budgeted $30. That's what we budget every single week. Um, and then for our campground, um, this pays for an annual um, campsite that we park our camper on. And we put $60 a week towards that. So that's all our bills this week. Pretty small amount of bills. Um, and the total for that when we add everything up is $425. So if we take that $425 that is our bill total and we subtract it from our income total, which you guys will remember was $850, that leaves us with $425 left to take to our next category, which is our cash envelopes. And if you've been watching my budget videos for the last couple of weeks, you know that we're not really doing cash envelopes because we're not really spending a whole lot. Um, we're not going anywhere, so we don't really need cash. Um, the only cash that I'm doing in terms of like our week to week spending or day to day spending, I guess, is my husband spending money. He is still working. He, um, like I said, works in the plumbing business. He's considered essential. So even though our state is on a stay home, stay safe order and a lot of people are out of work right now, he is still working. So um, I do like him to have a little bit of spending money for whatever he needs throughout the week. The last thing I want is for him to be out and about working and need something and have to swipe a credit card to get it. So um, I give him $40 a week. So that is what we are doing in terms of cash envelopes this week. Um, we take that envelope total, which is 40, and we subtract it from that 425 that we had left over after we paid our bills. And that leaves us with $385, and that's what we're going to take over here to our next category, which is sinking funds. So as you may be able to see from the shadowing here, I had planned to do a ton of sinking funds. Um, this week I thought for some reason that our pay was going to be higher than it was. Um, we get paid on Tuesdays, by the way, I'm filming this on Friday, so we have already received this paycheck and have already started paying some of these bills, actually. Um, so when I realized that we were going to be expecting something a little bit less than what I was anticipating, I was able to adjust my budget um, to accommodate that. I always use erasable ink in my planner here. This is a Parku erasable pen that I got from Amazon that I love. Um, and that makes it super easy to adjust my budget. Um, if I need to change something or if I make a math mistake, which I do quite often, um, I can always adjust that. But so we're not filling quite as many sinking funds this week, but I am grateful that we are still able to continue to put money away for sinking funds. 
Um, you know, if business continues to be slow and we find ourselves with less and less income because of this coronavirus, we may find that we have to um, stop funding sinking funds for a while. We may even have to get into our sinking funds to help um, pad our emergency fund a little bit if things get real bad, but I don't anticipate that being the case. We'll just have to kind of see what the future holds. Um, for now, we've just cut down on the number of sinking funds that we are um, funding this week, and that's totally fine. So the funds that I have made a priority for this week are our car tags and maintenance fund. Even though we are not um, driving our car a ton right now, um, we own a 2006, I think it's a 2006 or a 2008 um, Ford F-250 Super Duty, that is our main car. We also own a 2004 Saturn Ion, so they're older cars. Um, they do need to be maintained um, on the regular basis, even if it's just an oil change, but also we like to have money set aside for inevitable, you know, car trouble. And um, even though we're not driving right now, we still want to continue to fund that fund. So I've set aside $25 for that. Um, next up is Christmas. We are actively saving for Christmas 2020. You know it comes every year on December 25th, so there's no excuse not to be prepared for it if you, um, you know, are capable of planning ahead. So that's what we do. We set aside money pretty much every week. Doesn't always happen, but we try, and that is $30. I mentioned that um, we have our gasoline sinking fund, and the way that we work this, like I said earlier, is we budget our gas money for the week, and then any money that we don't use to fill our tank, we just set aside in our sinking fund. That way, in the summertime when we're driving more, um, or if we, you know, have a week where our income is lower and we need the gas money and we don't have it from a paycheck, we could always pull it out of that sinking fund. Um, we just like to have a little bit of extra on hand for that. So that's how we do our gas sinking fund. It's not something that we necessarily will fund every week. It's not something that we pull money specifically out of our budget to put into a sinking fund. It's just whatever we have left over. It's kind of a, a unique way of doing things, I think, but it works for us. Um, so that's $50, the full $50 that we pulled aside from last week and did not touch. So that'll go in our sinking fund. And then the last sinking fund we are funding this week is hunting. My husband is a hunter. Hunting season is another thing that we know comes every single year and there are expenses involved in hunting, whether it be his hunting licenses or, you know, hunting supplies, whatever he needs. So we put aside a little bit of money throughout the year for that so that when those expenses come up, we are not caught unawares. So that is um, just $20 we're setting aside for hunting this week. And that's a total of $125 in our sinking funds this week. So we take that $125 and we subtract it from that $385 that we had left over after we paid bills and our cash envelopes. And that leaves us with $260 to take to our next category, which is our extra debt. So for the last couple of weeks, we have been pulling the money out that we have planned for our debt snowball in cash and sticking it in an envelope to hold on to. Um, we are still, it's still really important to us that we pay off our debt as quickly as possible. Um, if you're not familiar, we do have some credit card debt. Um, we have some credit cards that we use and pay off every single month, but we also have some credit cards that we carry a balance on month to month that we are actively working towards paying down. Typically, what we do with our debt snowball is we will um, immediately pay whatever credit card we are working on in our debt snowball with that money, but because times are uncertain um, and we're not sure that you know, business is going to continue to thrive and we're not sure that my husband's not going to get sick. The way that we've chosen to do this is pull the money out, stick it in an envelope. That way we have it with the intention of paying debt. Um, and then once this whole pandemic panic is behind us and we know that our income is secure again, we will take that full amount that we've set aside and we'll pay that credit card. But 
this way should the shit hit the fan, I guess. Um, we can always get into this snowball envelope to help us pay our bills if we need it. So it's just sort of like rainy day savings for now, but we know that our ultimate intention is to put it towards um, our debt. Our debt snowball amount that we have worked up to is $112 a week. And so we're gonna take that $112 in cash and set it aside in our little um, accordion folder here where I keep all of my sinking funds. And that'll just sit there until we are ready to send it off to our credit card. So our extra debt total is $112. Um, we are going to take that $260 that we had left over from um, paying our bills, funding our cash envelopes, doing our sinking funds, and um, we're gonna subtract that 112 from it. So 260 minus 112 is $148, and that's what we're going to take to our final category, which is extra savings. I was very excited to be able to, to um, put aside money for extra savings, even though things were a little bit tighter this week than is typical for us. Um, I like to set aside extra savings just for a rainy day or for something fun or whatever it is. I don't have a specific plan for this money. Um, I don't have a specific plan for this money, which is why um, it differs from our sinking funds, which are also savings, obviously. Those savings have a goal in mind. They have a purpose. This extra savings is just money that I save just because. Um, I can do whatever I want with it, essentially. It may end up going to an extra debt payment. It may end up going into a sinking fund that we find we <clears throat> are short on, but for now, it's just extra savings. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. So, we had $148 left over after we paid everything else. Um, we are going to set aside $50 in our April savings. I follow the Budget Mom 2020 Savings Challenge course where she has outlined, um, I think it's a total of 24 different savings challenges. Every month is a couple of new challenges to just kind of help it help you find creative ways to save money makes it a little bit more fun the amount that I am saving for our April savings challenges is $50 and then the other way that I save money is with Saveopoly which is a printable um, that is sort of like the game of Monopoly <coughs> excuse me you guys um, you roll a dice you go around the board and the space that you land on the property that you land on essentially um, correlates with an amount of money that you save every week. So when I did that this week, I landed on a space worth $15. So we're going to set $15 aside in Saveopoly. And that is a savings total of $65. When you subtract that $65 from the $148 we had left over, it leaves us with $83, which we will just roll over till next week. So that is a look at my budget. Like I said, pretty short and sweet this week. Very simple. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So, there's that. I, after I completed my budget, I went through and I figured out which categories I needed cash for. So, in this case, most of the categories I'm working with these days are in cash. My cash envelopes are cash. My sinking funds I keep in cash. My extra debt payment right now is in cash. And of course the extra savings is also in cash. All of this cash gets taken from the bank and separated and put into my little accordion folder, which is where I keep um, all of my sinking funds and savings. This just gets locked into my safe here at home for safekeeping. Um, and that's how I do things. So I just figured out all of the categories I needed cash for, I wrote them here on the cash envelope breakdown, which is another super helpful page from my Budget Mom um, Budget by Paycheck workbook. So I wrote down all of the categories, my cash envelopes, all of that. I wrote down the amounts and then I used the cash breakdown here to figure out the denominations that I needed. I figured out that I needed two ones, two fives, three tens, five twenties, two fifties, and one one hundred. 
I wrote all that out on this little cash teller sticky note that I also purchased from the budget mom. And then we just take this right to the bank and give it to the teller who then can give us the denominations that we need. And I have those here now. So I have my cash, I have my plan. Now I can stuff my cash envelopes, which is my favorite part of budgeting. So I'm going to set aside my workbook here, keeping it handy so that I have it. And I'm going to pull my little accordion folder out here so that I can start stuffing these envelopes. So the very first envelope that I have to stuff is it not an envelope at all. It's just um, my husband's spending money. I keep envelopes in my wallet. Sorry, this is crooked. Um, I keep envelopes in my wallet that helps me uh, keep track of what all of my cash is when I'm actually taking cash. So I have cash envelopes in my wallet for things like um, my spending money, for eating out, and for miscellaneous. But my husband only has one category of cash that he holds on to, so he doesn't need a separate envelope. So I typically just give him his cash and he sticks it in his wallet. So for his um, spending money, he gets $40. So I'm just gonna pull this $40 out of my little cash stack here and set this aside for him. So he can stick that in his wallet. And that's it for the cash envelopes, makes it super simple. Um, next, we will move on to our sinking funds. So the first sinking fund we are funding this week is car tags and maintenance. I have um, my accordion folder here and each of the little sections in my accordion folder corresponds with one of my sinking funds. So I don't know if you can see this here, but we have our categories labeled on a little label from a label maker. We have anniversary, we have campground, which we're not currently doing in cash, but might again in the future. We have car tags, Christmas, all of the various funds are here. We don't fund every single one every single week. It just depends on the week. But um, that is how I do things. And I do keep track of the funds going in and out of my sinking fund funds um, using a little index card, which you will see here in a moment. So in my car tags and maintenance fund, I currently have $279. So all of the cash is here. And then I have the little card where I keep track of what I'm adding and subtracting every week. And this week was April 14th payday. There we go. And we're adding $25 this week. So we had 279 and we're gonna add 25 more. So I will go into my little cash stack here, pull out a 20 and a five. I'm gonna add these denominations into my fund and then we will count it up and make sure that everything is as it should be. Um, Should be $304 here if my math is accurate. If you have been watching my budget videos for a while, you know that my math is not always accurate. I'm not the greatest at math, but I always figure it out in the end. So let's go ahead and count this cash up and make sure that we have that $304. So we have 100, 50, 70, 90, 210, 230, 250, 260, 265, 270, 275, 280, 285, 290, 295, 300, 301, 2, 3, 4, 304 dollars. And we will just sit this in our envelope and um, it will continue to build up until we need the cash either to renew our car tags in January when my husband um, celebrates his birthday or when our car needs to be maintained, whether it be, a, like I said, an oil change or a part or labor or whatever it is. So this is gonna go back behind my car tags and maintenance fund tab. 
And next we will move on to Christmas. So behind my Christmas tab, I have this little envelope. This cash envelope comes from the Budget Mom. It was a principal that was included in her 2020 Savings Challenge course. I always have that course linked below um, underneath my budget videos. It's a really awesome resource. I highly recommend it. In addition to all of the various um, challenges that she has come up with, you also get a ton of printables and things. Um, it's just really cool. It's a lot of fun. In addition to that, you also get access to a Facebook group, a private Facebook group, um, with other people who have signed up for the challenge, and it's fun to kind of share your progress with people and see what other people are doing to save money. Um, so I highly recommend that course. I have been saving for Christmas 2020 since December 12th of 2019, and I have saved a total of $380 so far which is exciting. My goal is to have $1,000 saved for Christmas by November. That way I have time to do my Christmas shopping. Um, so, you know, we're getting there. We're more than a quarter of the way there, which is exciting. Um, we, you know, we just uh, finished about a quarter of the year so far. So I'm on track. And we are going to add $30. So in the case of this envelope here, I just write directly on the envelope. I don't have a little index card for this. Um, and that should be $410, I think, in my Christmas fund, if my math is accurate, once I've added $30. So I'm gonna go into my stack of cash here and add a 20 and a 10. And then we will Add that into our fund here, and we'll get it counted up. So we have 100, 200, 300, 350, 370, 390, 400, 410. Very exciting. So I'll just stick this back in my envelope, and stick this back in my accordion folder, and we'll move on to our next category, which is our gasoline category. So our gas fund currently has $33 in it. That is the gas money that I have managed to set aside um, that we haven't used, which is cool. This will add up pretty quickly, especially with us not doing a ton of driving right now. But that's nice because it means that we will have extra gas money when we need it. So we're going to add... $50 to this fund this week and that should mean we have $88 total in this fund so let's count it up and see shall we sorry if the counting is tedious I just really enjoy counting money for one um, I enjoy seeing the fund grow every week and also I like just to make sure that there hasn't been money pulled out of here that I didn't write down. I'm not always the most organized person. I just want to make sure I have what I think I'm supposed to have. So 50, 70, 80, 81, 82, $83. Oop, see? Oh, why did I write 88? 50 plus 33 is not 88. It's definitely 83. This is what happens when I try to budget and talk at the same time. $83 is correct. So that's gas. Stick this back behind the tab here and move on to our last category for this week um, in sinking funds before we move on to our debt and extra savings. And that is hunting. So my hunting fund currently has $115 in it. So I have $115 in here and we are going to add 20 more. So that'll be $135. I'm just going to add a 20. And we'll go ahead and count this all up. So I have 50, 70, 90. 110, 120, 130, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Excellent. Now we get to move on to our 
debt snowball payment. My debt snowball amount is $224. This is just sitting here cooling its heels until we either need it to help us get by during this coronavirus pandemic or until we can send it off to the credit card that we are currently working with or working on rather. So we're adding another $112 today and that should mean $336 is what I have in my debt snowball. Fund. So we're going to add a 100, a 10, and two ones. And I will just slip that in here. I believe my husband just pulled up. He's home early. So if you guys hear a bunch of noise, I apologize. He's going to be coming in any second. So $336, 100, 200, 300, 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So that takes care of our extra debt. And lastly, we're gonna move on to our savings. So first category is our monthly savings. We are in the month of April. So that is what we're going to be saving for today. And I have my little April envelope. This is another one of those things from the Budget Mom. I love her cash envelopes. She has a ton of cash envelopes uh, available on her website, both um, printable ones as well as ones that you can purchase and have her ship to you. Um, so for April, I currently have $50 in my fund. We're gonna add another $50 today. I believe every week in the month of April, I'm planning on putting aside $50. So I have a 50 in there. We're going to add another 50 for a total of $100. Easy peasy. <sighs> All right. Um, and so lastly, we have my Saveopoly category. Saveopoly is currently sitting at $100, and we are going to add our last 15 to that fund right now. Like I said, you guys, my husband just walked in the door, so I apologize for the noise. Just gonna finish this up real quick so I can go and kiss him hello. So we're gonna add a 10 here and a five, and we'll count this up should be a total of $115 now. And I'm going to need to get a new card next week. Because this one is full. So 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, $15 that takes care of Saveopoly and that takes care of all of our cash envelopes and our sinking funds. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this back behind this tab here and we will wrap up this video. It's a pretty short one this week. All right, you guys, so that is it for my weekly budget. Pretty short and sweet this week. Pretty simple. Um, but we got the job done. All our bills are going to be paid, so that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up so that I know. Um, check out all of the links down below. I'll have everything that I used in this video linked, as well as some other helpful stuff. Um, make sure that you subscribe if you haven't done so already. I do budgeting videos every single week. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!